All right, time to go. See if people drops in. It's a massive room. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel. I'm the VP of uh, a business unit we call Compliant Cloud at City Network. Uh, City Network is a Swedish IES provider, uh, also now a gold member uh, of the OpenStack Foundation and the community. So proud of that. Together with uh, Roger Evert, who is uh, working at our customer Folksum, we're going to uh, talk about how Folksum got going with OpenStack. And I'm going to finish off with how we as a provider uh, have to adapt and what we'd have to think about when we're working with uh, cloud solutions for bank and finance companies. So Roger, kick it off. Hi. Thank you. Yeah, I work at the insurance company Folksam, a Nordic uh, insurance company uh, based in Sweden. And I work as an IT architect for technology and infrastructure in a group called Architecture and in, uh, in IT Innovation. And with that, it means that we try to uh, help the business with how to use technology to drive business. But to set you in a context uh, to describe what Foxon do, uh, this is uh, some uh, information. It was founded early 1908, the same year as General Motors. And at the same uh, year, the first time a big ball was dropped in New York Times Square to celebrate a new year. It consists of 23 companies it has a premium volume of 50 billion Swedish crowns, and we manage about 400 billion Swedish crowns for our customers. Uh, we have almost uh, every second Swede insured, uh, about over 4 million. I think it's 4.2 million people. And we are 4,000 employees. And uh, one interesting thing I think is the contract time uh, for life insurance and, and, and other stuff is that we have contracts that runs over 130 years. And with that, it's an estimated lifetime of 100 years and 30 years for rel uh, surviving relatives. And uh, Folksam is a driver for innovation and uh, want to impact the society in different way, people, companies, and uh, even uh, governments. And uh, Folksam is a mutual company. Uh, it, it means that if you take an insurance in Folksam, you're an owner of uh, uh, Folksam also, like a stockholder. And the vision is to, that people should feel secure in a sustainable world. I see some similarities with the mutual insurance companies and open source projects com and communities. They have no shareholders that demands profits. It's a lot of people that get together to uh, achieve a common goal. Everyone enjoys success and even setbacks. Both have the uh, will to improve for others and simplify in the world, hopefully. But this compar comparison is uh, something we can discuss maybe over a beer later tonight. So a short intro to Folks on IT department. It's around 600 employees and, of course, some consultants. We have a, around approximately 800 applications that runs on 1,200 instances. Uh, we have 50 uh, development and, and management system groups. We run about 60 to 70 IT projects per year. Our workplace and data center and application operation is mainly outsourced. Not e everything, but mainly. We have a big uh, in-house development with COBOL. We have Java, .NET and others. The technology and infrastructure, yes, we have mainframe. And uh, that's an interesting thing because uh, Folksam was the first Nordic company that ha had the first commercial uh, mainframe in the 50s. 
it was the IBM 650 that we were uh, uh, the first company to use to do efficiency in our uh, company. And uh, now I go to the other side. Here's a, a timeline over uh, our transformation, digital transformation. And I start the years 2000 to 2012. I call it the uh, IT starvation era. We didn't get any funds and money to do cool stuff. So it was keep, just keep floating. And then, uh, 2012, I was with, uh, uh, to set up architecture and uh, IT innovation group. Uh, and we started with uh, uh, consolidating the strategies. Because we have uh, a st strategy for every uh, area, like technology, development, and everything. But we saw it didn't map together. So we uh, consolidated lots of the strategies into one solution strategy. At the same year, we found an uh, interesting uh, pattern called space-based architecture that we wanted to look more into. Uh, 2013, uh, we got a new CEO. It's a very technical uh, CEO. Uh, he came from the Nasdaq Nordic, which is highly digital, lice. And uh, the business wanted to modernize the IT. So uh, it was the really start and, uh, to the digital transformation we began. We started to do a lot of ev evaluations and proof of concepts. And uh, then we, f uh, for the first time on Folksam, we found out um, about OpenStack. Uh, it was when the Grizzly uh, was released. So we asked ourselves, what in the heck is OpenStack? Is it just an another hype? But uh, in 2014, we had uh, done a lot of proof of concept and evaluations. So we started to write the strategies for the future and how we would help folks on to achieve digital transformation. So we went around and anchoring uh, information about the new technology, how you could use it and everything how it would benefit the company, both for business and IT. We got the decision and uh, we started to prepare for uh, the directives to execute. But back to the years 2013 to 2014, we had asked ourselves, what are the uh, future of application platform inf infrastructure look like? So here is some keywords. Uh, I won't go through all of them, but one, uh, one point is very important for us. It was automation in an entire chain, because if you have that as a goal, uh, everything, everything else will come as, as you go. So, what did we found when we did the evaluation and proof of concepts? We found an application server that implemented the space page architecture pattern. And the benefits was ability to easily scale up and out. Extremely efficient. And you, if you scale, you can scale near liner scalability as you can get. And the dynamic scalability was built into the engine level, so you didn't have to build it around it. It gave good data consistency and high availability across all three tires. It collapsed the presentation, business logic, and data layer to get the tires together. 
It was extremely fast. It ba was based on in-memory technology. And uh, it was effortless parallelism. It made it easy to uh, parallelize tasks over a distributed system. And it had SLA-driven container and SLA monitoring. It was a perfect match for our solu first uh, solution for our customer-facing web applications and uh, mobile-friendly websites. But we had a question, what should we run this platform on? The choices at the time it was the traditional VMware uh, environment, but it hadn't uh, integrated OpenStack or so. so. It wasn't invented at the time. So we could use dedicated servers, but we felt that was to go back in time. We could use public cloud, but we were not mature enough, not even the public clouds were mature to handle the sensitive in the data that we handle. We could ask our IT outsourcing partners to build a cloud for us internally in our data centers. But that uh, make us lose control. We were dependent to go in their, their phase. We wanted to control the phase of the project. So we could build our own cloud. So we chose to build our own cloud inside our data center. So I ordered 10 blade servers and, uh, with Red Hat on and uh, designed uh, uh, how to set up the set, uh, OpenStack solution. And I got help from uh, uh, consultants to help uh, on different parts. And why did we choose OpenStack? It's like what, what we have heard in the keynotes too. Uh, it's followed the uh, open source initiative and we see it as the cloud standard. It's the big community and ecosystem. It grows all the time. The openness and accessibility made us self-sufficient. So we had our own resources in the project and didn't have to wait for another uh, company to help us. At the same time, at, we can handle the security and regulation uh, part on the way with the technical improvement and development. And we will also want to get more insight of what is cloud. Everybody talks about cloud, but it's just another way to uh, get capacity and compute power. So it helped us when we wrote uh, strategies for um, uh, like sourcing strategy. And it was really hard work, I say. This is some keywords and, uh, that we came across. And uh, it was a very funny time because you got deep in stuff and learned a lot. And uh, that's important because uh, it's important to have a competence in the group. Here's one uh, network topology of the OpenStack. I think it's the second version that we set up. Uh, and I can say we, in, on the storage side, we use the Ceph platform for storage. And uh, it's uh, using the basic uh, components in OpenStack. After have uh, set up free infrastructure with OpenStack, we, we did a reflection. Do folks really want to operate and handle infrastructure uh, as a service inside by ourselves? No, we want to focus on business development, development and innovations and application technology. 
So we wondered, is there anyone out, uh, out there who c could help us on the way to uh, uh, give us an uh, infrastructure service that met our demands? So now we have come to the year 2015, last year. It was execution time. We started to work first to look on the Agile method safe and uh, the way of working, setting up the teams, talking about how it would work together. Uh, and then we had four platforms to set up. We had a web content management, a web content, uh, web, del uh, web content delivery. We had uh, the application platforms and we have the operation platforms in a little time. We needed to set continuous integration and continuous delivery process, and uh, also look at the roles of, of XOPS. Uh, how would we handle it? Shall we, uh, should we use only DevOps or uh, DevOps and SysOps? And then we needed to do a procurement to get an uh, OpenStack as a service. And I w on the procurement, it's like every procurement you do, the only thing with this was it was more people involved and uh, more focus on uh, regulation and security. It was uh, lots of risk assessments. And uh, after, oh, sorry, uh, we found uh, a provider, City Networks, that uh, gave us good impression that they were very technical and could uh, lots of OpenStack and DevOps and uh, things that we wanted to have help with. And also, they were very good at regulations and IT security. They proved for us that uh, they were a player that could help us to be more movable than the big, big uh, uh, providers. But it was a little bit problem because uh, the company size was like a system development group in Folksam. So the size of the company was a problem for some people. But we told the management that uh, with new technology, and the, and the modern infrastructure that you have, and with automation, you don't need to have 2,000 employees to deliver this kind of service. That's why automation is a driver. So, what have we built on OpenStack? Below, you have uh, the uh, service from City Networks that delivers the virtual data center ability to uh, create a virtual data center. And on top of that, we have the application infrastructure with a CMS VSM and a search platform and a Java platform and the operation platform. And uh, on the operation platform, we use the ELK stack and the TIC stack to uh, collect logs and uh, metrics and on the orchestration side, we use Ansible and Heat for provisioning. And uh, configuration management is also Ansible. And we are going to take in Ansible Tower. And we are looking also at another uh, open source project. Uh, is called Cloudify uh, to, uh, have, uh, to see how it fits in. And uh, if you look at this stack, everything can be replaced. Uh, that's the uh, mind we had to have all the time, to uh, lose coupled components that we can change. So we can change Java platform and uh, orchestration tools and everything. But it's a package that we have that we can put on every, uh, any provider. We can go to Azure, we can go to uh, OS or something. 
Here's a picture, uh, I think it was the first or second version of our continuous delivery process uh, that we uh, set up. And uh, it really works fine for us. But as you see in, uh, in the middle, we have a border for, for we haven't continuous deployment after a, a, a certain level. So now, since uh, in March 2016, we have been in production, and we have some incidents, but we have been resilient. Uh, so the customer haven't noticed anything. So together with OpenStack, you, you ha we have really created a dynamic, elastic uh, automation uh, that uh, don't uh, uh, ma makes customer uh, uh, notice incidents. And we have terminated the big program and projects and. Uh, the organization line is taking over what we did in the project, but uh, we're not ready yet. Uh, it's still some things to help them with. You remember this slide about the keyboards? And uh, have we uh, achieved all this? I would say yes, we have, but not uh, all the way. It's a continuous process to improve us. Never, it, nothing is re ever ready. So uh, now I come to consideration and lesson learned. Uh, one thing that struck me that uh, we were so focused on uh, security and regulation around the uh, infrastructure service and the provider that we forgot ourselves, what we put on OpenStack, we must also be compliant. So we have launched a big project to handle that, some, that kind of questions too. Oh, sorry. Self-service, uh, that's a very good feature, but it gets a problem when developers and teams uh, have the environments up and go on vacation. So the effectiveness and cost savings with the pay per use doesn't uh, get good because uh, they are not uh, uh, understanding that they need to take them uh, down when they're not working with them, that we have the cost model of pay per use per second. So we must educate our teams and uh, talk about it, but we are also looking at a, a, a technical solution to use metrics and logs to see if anyone working in the environments and uh, after a uh, while we take them down safely. Another thing, uh, to run all the production environment on this laptop, for in instance, it's very uh, good to, uh, for developers and everything. But uh, the problem is I can take this home and sit at home setting up the environment, even if the performance is low, I can uh, test some attacks and uh, hack the systems with nobody knowing about it. In a traditional way, you had to hack uh, on, on the production environment if you were on the internet. But in this case, if we lose the information, uh, then uh, anyone can uh, try to uh, uh, do an attack pattern that is functional. And so you need to consider how to handle, uh, how, you should, how you handle the development teams and what they can do with uh, their development environments. And another thing, staff the risk analyze with the, the right uh, people from the beginning. We started because in a hurry, but we forgot some uh, roles. So 
it's good to have the lawyer in, in, in the beginning because if you go 60% of your process uh, and take in the lawyers, you uh, start on the page one again. Everything is not always, uh, uh, everything go, don't go as planned, so be pragmatic. Uh, fail fast. That we have done uh, many times. And as an architect, you need uh, another way to uh, work with architecture and design because uh, it's, you must use principle and guidelines uh, because you don't have the final solution in, in an architecture way. You can have a framework of uh, principles and uh, guidelines. And another uh, lesson learned is uh, uh, you must put some effort to change the organization. In our program and pro project that we did, it was like a shadow IT. We uh, took the team of uh, 70 people in another house and they worked uh, isolated from all the process that we had inside uh, Folksam. Otherwise, it would have taken three, four years. And what we did, we did it on six months. Uh, but when the organization line will take over, uh, they are not prepared in, in our case. So that's why I'm sitting and helping them to uh, uh, take uh, the platforms, the uh, way of working and everything. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I must work with them uh, a couple months more. And have a plan B. Uh, no, sorry. Don't underestimate the security challenge here. Uh, we saw that if we would uh, uh, build a uh, platform as a service that we can move everywhere, you must have uh, security on uh, 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 every level. And uh, for example, we have uh, uh, authentication on uh, um, what is called uh, integration and uh, uh, session calls between applications. And we uh, uh, encrypt some data. have a plan B in just in case. Uh, when we went with City Networks, we didn't know if they could meet our demands and uh, needs as the way we wanted. So we needed a plan B to uh, have in just in case, but we didn't need to ex uh, use that plan B. Think about cloud and multi-cloud strategy and hybrid strategy. Uh, and also multi-provider, uh, because uh, uh, that's, uh, I was on a Gartner conference in London for three weeks ago, and uh, everybody talks about multi-provider. And uh, I think uh, it's the right way to uh, 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 separate the risks. And think about your cloud maturity. Uh, we were three people on Folksam that uh, had the whole picture and went in core to uh, work with OpenStack and everything else. Uh, but we needed help from the outside and we have got help from City Networks and another consultant uh, firm. And uh, with the, their help, we have come this way, all this way and are in production. So now it's time for Daniel to take over. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm going to make a little call of arms here today. Uh, we are an IS provider working with bank and finance services, and we made a conscious decision that we wanted to start delivering these types of services to these regulated industries in general. Not only bank and finance, it could be uh, automotive, it could be healthcare. Uh, we personally feel, and they can attest to, that these, are, these industries are being held back, essentially, because there's all these cool features out there, all these great things that you guys develop and everything that we come up with, and they can't use it. 
because it's either a regulatory demand that puts a lid on it, or it's, it's a this is how we always, always done thing type of mentality, which is really hard to change. Uh, we realized when we started to work in these industries that we had all these cool features. Please start using it. It's, it's out there. And everyone was like, yeah, in a year or two, mate. Because they don't work, really, they don't move really fast. That's just the simple truth of it. We want to help that, and I want to make a call of arms to everybody that it is time to get these industries going. <clears throat> the reason being is that these companies are working in heavily disruptive industries. Today, you have small companies come growing fast and taking over industries. They, they're changing the way they do business today. How bank and finance was a couple of years ago is not true anymore. Today, we do almost all our services with our, with our cell phones or our, or our tablets or, or our laptops. We don't go to a bank uh, office anymore. We don't go to an insurance company's office anymore. And these types of industries are being attacked by disruptive companies, which they could either try to defend themselves against, which is probably going to be a bad thing. They're going to lose that in, uh, because if you have a modern idea and modern way of thinking, when you start your business, you have, your, you, have, you have a leg up, so to speak. So these companies have to start to adapt. And I feel as, as a provider of these services and developers and whoever it might be, you can assist. And I'm going to try to just put our... Uh, our way of modern way of thinking. Innovation was mentioned this morning. Innovation is hard. It's really, really hard. But these industries have to innovate, and they have to change the way they're doing their business, and they have to do it quite rapidly. And a technology like OpenStack is a great tool to get it done. When Folksan came to us, and this is just in general, uh, it could be any type of, of insurance company. When they asked for innovation, agility, pay as you go, scalable, flexible automation, and orchestration, that's, that is not really the, that, that's not really an issue because we do that every day. We have a public cloud, a uh, city, uh, city cloud, spread around the world. This is the type of services that we deliver. But when they add on top of their, their uh, legislations, the rules and legislation that they have to follow now is the exciting bit. Because as a provider now, you have to start to adapt to the rules. The main thing for these companies is that if they want to use cloud services today, their lawyers are going to say no. I, I can give a great example. We are, a couple of uh, months ago, we started a negotiation with the Financial Institute in Sweden. Their lawyers said straight up, if you put the word cloud in the contract, it's a nine-month process. If you call it a capacity service, we're good to go. So the guy said, you can call it whatever you want, and we're good to go. But the word cloud is, a, is not a positive word because we made it something new. We call it we call the new thing. Here comes cloud services you've never seen before. The truth and reality is, it's the next generation outsourcing. It's the next generation of virtualization. It's the next general, uh, generation, uh, uh, generation of, of orchestration. That's what it is. If we could just stick to that, then the lawyers can follow suit and we can get going more rapidly. Because when we call it cloud and you've never seen this before, automatically they're thinking, we can't use this service. Because it's all about control of data. And it's all about auditability. Auditability is the key word for everybody if you're going to try to, to deliver these services to a bank and finance industry or a regulated industry in general. The auditor wants to see your data center. And you have to open up your books, you have to open your data centers and let them in and show you exactly where these customers are at. This is the problem today with the Amazons of the world and the public cloud providers that are just a public cloud provider, such as ourselves. We have our public cloud as well, which is for anybody with a credit card to use, just like AWS. So we found out that we had to separate the, these customers to a separate cloud, what we call a community cloud. It is pay as you go. It is still IAS. It is still OpenStack. We run Metaka, by the way. I'm going to get through in a couple of seconds. But you have to adapt your, in, your platform to their industry and their rules and their registrations. GDPR, everybody knows about it? General data protection rule comes from the EU, already taken effect. It's going to affect not only the customers, it's going to affect us, us as providers, and it's going to affect you as developers as well. Because you have to start to think about 
how we handle PII data today and the technical aspects of it and the security aspects of it. So general data protection rule is there to protect us in the EU. Problem is though, it's not, a, it's not a law in the US, it's not a law in Asia, it's only a law in Europe. So coming back to the discussion we heard during the keynote this morning, that in Europe we, we really like our data and we want to protect our, uh, our, our people, it's true. But it's come to a degree where it's so now separated from the three different continents or the several continents around the world, we don't have the same rules and legislations re regarding PIA data. But we had to adapt to folks in this case, uh, they're a Swedish company, they live in Europe, they work in Europe, they function in Europe, we had to adapt to the European laws. We are European entity as well, so EU is, is, is that, so to speak, we have to adapt. Solvency is also EU directive that you have to be compliant with as a provider of these services. Uh, Basel is for banks. Solvency is essentially, you can explain this better than I can, but what essentially is, it is a framework for an insurance company uh, for, for how they have to work and what they have to report and they have to be uh, responsible to the EU to report what they do, when and where. And if you provide a service like this to an insurance company or a bank, you as a provider become a part of that chain. So you also have to be able to report to the EU everything that comes into what you do. And then, of course, the general data protection authorities, as I mentioned, they want to keep track of what you do. And you have to be able to open your doors and enable and allow audits. Extremely important. Because when you don't is when the uh, lawyers say no, essentially. Okay, so this is how we did it. We, as I mentioned, we built a separate community cloud. It is separate from our public cloud, but it can be combined because not everything that Folksum does is heavily, heavily uh, regulated and horrible. You can actually use some of it in a public cloud. It all depends on what type of data it is. Uh, but we built a separate cloud uh, based on OpenStack, as I mentioned, currently running Metaka. Uh, we also realized coming back to the solvency and all of the regula uh, regulatory aspects, that we had to share the load of responsibility. Either you take full stake, which is a possibility as well. If you're a large company, you can take full stake and you can control the entire chain. Or if you're a smaller company like us, you have to control what you can control. And you have to be really honest with yourself what you're really good at. If we as an uh, uh, infrastructure company know that that's our, that's our strength, right? Code and maybe the uh, OpenStack distributions is really not our strength. The facilities themselves might not be our strength. So we heavily depend on partners. We chose to go, uh, go with the uh, Red Hat distribution of the OpenStack and the OS versions uh, in, our, in our community cloud based on the fact that uh, essentially we looked out and said who is working with and really following the uh, uh, security aspects and really want to be a, a, part, a player with it regarding the security aspects within the OpenStack Foundation and the family. Red Hat was one of them. There's several, several other out there as well. But after our due diligence, we, we decided to go with Red Hat. Um, we have facility managers in, in our data centers. We have one in Stockholm and one in Kroskrona, which is in southeast of Sweden. We also have uh, facilities in London and Frankfurt where we can provide these types of services. And there uh, we heavily uh, depend on interactions as partners us for the facility itself. And then we uh, host all of our uh, infrastructure within their facilities because once again, coming back to the fact that you need to realize what you're good at. Maintaining a facility can be really, really expensive. ISO certificates. How many have in your company the ISO certificates? This uh, 27,001, 15, and 18 in your company today. Okay, we do. And so does Amazon, and so does Microsoft, and almost every other IES provider out there. This is also a key feature and something that needs to be in place in order to be able to deliver these types of services to especially bank and finance. Uh, the 15 is for bank and finance itself. It's the own ISO standard for bank and finance. And the 18 is for PII data. And the 27001 is for um, IT security in general. 
What this means is that we as a company and as a provider, so does Microsoft, so does Amazon, is audited at least once a year by a third party auditor who guarantees that we actually follow suit and actually work according to these ISO certificates. Also, coming back to what you as a company, if you are looking into running these types of services or if you are a provider, if you today were to outsource your, your uh, IT infrastructure to whoever it might be, a normal outsourcing case, you would never do that without a direct contract with that provider. In the IAS world today, we have our standard agreements and they are extremely pro us. And they're extremely pro the, 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 uh, the uh, delivering partner because it is because of the fact that we have customers with credit cards just using your services. We don't know when and where they can leave tomorrow. So they have to be very pro us. But they don't work for the regulated uh, industries. You need to allow to sign a direct contract with your customer. And in that contract, you stipulate when, where, and how, just like you do in a normal outsourcing world. If you can do that, you get rid of the main issue, with, which is the legal portion of it, which you can, you can control when, where, and what, uh, how. Also, what happens when we leave? And you control the fact that we as a provider don't move your data, which is also extremely important, coming back to the fact that they have, to, they have two data centers in Sweden, and they are not allowed to move their data outside of Sweden because they are what? A heavily PII regulated company. Everything they do is PII data. Right? So we as a provider cannot move the data for them. It has to be stipulated in the contract. If you stick to that, then these types of services are absolutely more than doable. The, the whole notion that cloud is not for regulated industries is false in my mind. You can absolutely do it. You have to follow suit to their, according to their rules and regulations, but it's absolutely there to be delivered. It can be a public cloud, as I mentioned, what we call a community cloud, where you have several companies sharing the infrastructure so you can actually run a true pay-as-you-go model. Or it could be a dedicated, or a, uh, a dedicated private cloud uh, for banks, for instance. According to their laws, they're not allowed to share uh, storage with, with uh, any other company, so they have to run on a private cloud. Insurance companies, different story. They can share uh, infrastructures. We can actually combine multiple companies on the same infrastructure within the same uh, rule set and therefore provide a true IAS pay as you go model for, infra, uh, for high, a highly regulated companies such as Volkswagen. Or you can do a true hybrid, meaning if you already have a data center which you really like, really love, and you don't want to leave, and the CIO, the CIO or the CEO of the company says, we don't want to move anywhere, we, we still want to run our own data center, that's all good. Because you can combine that with a public cloud provider's data center and build a hybrid. As long as it is according to the regulations, in, uh, uh, according to that business, as long as you have your ISO certificates in place and you're willing to allow audits, then you can build a hybrid. So, once again, the whole notion of that cloud is insecure, the whole notion that regulated industries cannot run their services in the public cloud is false. To the extent that you have to have a direct contract where you state and stipulate all the rules and regulations and how you have to follow suit as a provider. If you do that, you can actually do it. If it is by standard agreements alone, I agree. It's not okay because it's not good enough. And also remember that the word cloud still in the regulated industries are heavily infected. It's not, we, we take it for granted, well, cloud service is great because we understand what it is. But the lawyers of the day have some work to do. As I mentioned, if I have one word of cloud in the contract, it's a nine month process. If I, say, if I call it capacity service, we're good to go. So keep that in mind. Uh, our time is almost up. So. Either we open up for questions or you can meet us outside. But with that, we thank you for your attention. Any questions? Sure. 
you meaning the, the open stack itself? Or all right. So what we do is we don't we don't use this in uh, this platform as, as the guinea pig platform. We have a public cloud for that. Uh, we all uh, when the new release come out, we're almost three months behind uh, when we do the upgrade in the in the uh, in our in our community clouds and we in our uh, in our private clouds. Uh, we want to see that everything works before we do any, any major changes. But we still try to keep up. As I mentioned, we're on Metaka right now. When we, uh, we have, we're on Metaka in, in every data center that we run, both public and, and community-wise. Uh, and we have the, the, uh, we have the uh, uh, strategy to always be on the latest version as, as much as possible. We all, but we always do launch our public cloud first, and then we do the community cloud afterwards when we know what's happening. All right, we're outside if you want to talk to us. Thanks so much.